Hello friends, what's up? This is Adam Milano Cap and today we are going to understand about quintessence. Now in this video, we are going to review a very interesting topic about dynamical system analysis for ST potential. What is the meaning of ST potential and what is the role of potential? We are going to discuss it and we are going to understand the quintessence in terms of dynamical system stability. Okay, so this is a very important paper and we are going to review it. So first let us understand what is the meaning of an ST potential. Here they have chosen the potential of uh, you know scalar field in terms of like uh, exponential potential. The quintessence potential is usually assumed to be e to the power phi or people you uh, people sometimes choose phi to the power p. These categories are called power law potential. These are exponential potential. But we can again choose this exponential potential to be like e to the power phi to the power n. Okay. What does it mean? It means that we can choose phi square, phi cube, phi to the power 5, 4 and so on. So when your potential have you know power law type uh, scenario and it is exponent then the potential will become you know a lot of steeper. For an example if you see the exponential to the power x graph here then it will rise like this. Suppose I am going to understand about it to the power x square then it will have this kind of scenario. Similarly, for x cube, this will go like this and again as we are increasing the power, it will become more steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay, so that is the meaning of an steep, steep potential. Now, in the context of quintessence, how are we going to understand it? We already know that if you want to understand quintessence, first we write the action. So, action is like first we are going to write the action corresponds to gravity, which is like this. And there are Ricci tensor and 2 kappa square where kappa square is square root of kappa is square root of 8 pi z. Okay. So this is the gravity part and then we are going to add with another thing like d4x and L of phi and d mu phi. And this L of phi and d mu phi it will going to give you the quintessence Lagrangian which is about like this square root of g and then minus half d mu phi d mu phi minus of v phi. So uh, here if you just plug in the 0 0 part then the half phi dot square it will give you half phi dot square and we are assuming that the universe is isotropic and homogeneous then you will get half phi dot square and then minus of v phi. That is the standard Lagrangian that we have already talked about in my earlier videos. That it is the Lagrangian corresponds to the quintessence. Okay. So I hope these terms are clear. Then we are going to move on to if I am assuming that here ds square is equal to minus dt square plus a square some dx square. This is the isotropic FLRW matrix. Okay. So this is this corresponds to Friedman Lemaitre. Robertson matrix. My uh, choice of uh, matrix signature is minus plus plus and plus. Okay. So now we are want to understand the behavior of quintessence when we have the generalized potential or we are saying the ST potential. So first of all when we are going to solve the uh, Einstein's field equation we are going to get the two field equations which corresponds to 3h square is equal to rho m consider that in our action there is a barotropic fluid or dark matter so this corresponds to the dark matter fluid and then half phi dot square plus v phi now we can always multiply with some kappa square and in this paper the kappa square is assumed to be one there is no problem we are working always in natural unit and natural unit can be set to equal to one okay now we can also have the second Friedman equation which is 2h dot plus 3h square is equal to minus half phi dot square plus v phi and this is corresponds to pressure of this field. And we are assuming that we are the dark matter is a pressureless fluid therefore the pm is actually going to be zero here. Okay. Now uh, since these two guys are minimally coupled to each other because we have uh, the quintessence and the quintessence dark matter and the uh, geometric part they are minimally they are exchange its energy momentum tensor through the matrix there is no any coupling direct coupling between the dark matter and the gravity therefore the energy momentum tensor is individually conserved so we can say that rho phi dot plus 3h rho phi plus p phi is equal to 0 and similarly for this equation 3h rho n is equal to 0 now this equation is basically the field equation in the you know quintessence so which is actually giving you that phi dot plus 3h phi dot plus dv over d phi where v is the potential of the 
quintessence so this is the field when, uh, so this is the field equation when you are using these two equations okay now we want to understand the more interesting thing about the dynamics so whenever we are whenever we used to study the dynamics we have to first define the few variables few dimensionless variables so in the in general in quintessence people used to define the dimensionless parameters are like this x is equal to phi dot over square root of 6h y is equal to square root of v over uh, square root of 3h and then lambda is kind of you know a, a potential derivative of the potential to dv over d phi and similarly gamma is v v double phi over v phi square okay so this is the second derivative in potential this is the first derivative in potential okay now here you can see that x is dependent on phi dot and phi dot can vary from phi dot can be vary from plus infinity to minus infinity there is no problem in it because phi is again it can take any value between minus infinity to infinity now h is always a positive quantity because how well so we are not uh, talking about the you know contracted universe we are always talking about the expanding universe so in our universe h is always positive which, which makes that that x can be between minus infinity to plus uh, plus infinity okay while uh, we have defined the y uh, of uh, corresponds to the potential and a potential in this case is always be positive because it's square root of potential and we have used the sign which is uh, positive which makes y to be positive the denominator in h is again the positive v is positive therefore h is always y is always positive now on the other hand lambda can be minus infinity to infinity and gamma again can be minus infinity to infinity there is no problem in it okay now so we have to first define that what is dx over dt and then we can convert it dx over h into dt and this h into dt will give you the dn number of e folds okay this dn is always defined as h into dt which is corresponding to the number of e folds now using this you know if you are going to take a derivative we are going to uh, see the autonomous equation and this autonomous equation is given by 2.7 2.8 and 2.9 so you can see here that x prime y prime and lambda prime their x prime is denoting dx over dt is dt okay so whenever you will see this kind of thing it is meaning that it is actually giving you the x prime equation and similarly y prime and lambda prime now here is the thing now when you will take the derivative of uh, you know uh, potential so usually what happens is that if you have uh uh, suppose you have the potential and the potential is having only e to the power minus or let us say alpha phi okay so if you will take the one derivative what happens is that it will give you only e to the power alpha phi and if you divide by that potential then this alpha phi e to the power alpha will cancel out and you will get only the constant part okay so this lambda will actually become the constant but when you have the d alpha e to the power alpha phi square or n then it will have the alpha component so lambda will depend on phi. okay so i'm not going to give you the calculation you can easily find out but what happens is that you know lambda is again depend on phi and as long as we can say that as long as phi can be again written in terms of lambda because you know when we are whenever we are writing the autonomous equation we must close each and every variables okay so if my choice of you know dynamical variable is x y and lambda therefore each and every equation autonomous equation can be written in terms of one and another okay so because now phi is a different quantity and we have already given the uh, you know y corresponds to v of phi okay so what we are going to do we have defined another variable lambda which is corresponds to the derivative of the potential then we can invert the phi in terms of lambda so now we have written the one more uh, dynamical equation corresponds to lambda prime and the gamma is again can be written in terms of lambda okay so they have already defined here gamma is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 into n alpha 1 over n minus 1 over 1 over lambda to the power n over n minus 1 okay so in this way what happens is that uh, in this way we have defined each and every parameter of the diamonds of the you know dynamical system in terms of one another and our dynamical system is closed as you can see
Now we have other cosmological parameters like equation of a state. So in this case, the total equation of a state will become p phi plus p m over rho phi plus rho m, which is uh, x square minus y square. And similarly, the conditions for condition equation of a state. So there are two equations of a state. One is the field equation of a state, and another is the effective equation of a state of the total system. Okay. So omega phi is always defined as the ratio of a pressure over density. So the field uh, field omega equation of a state will x square minus y square over x square plus y square now you may have uh, you know wondered that okay what happens to the fluid because we have the fluid so the fluid is omega p over um, rho and uh, it, since it is a pressureless fluid though therefore the equation of the state of the dark matter is always be going to zero now omega phi is the critical density so this critical density is basically defined as you know that uh, rho phi is half phi dot square plus v phi so if you take the 3h square will give you half phi dot square 3h square plus v phi of 3h square okay so in terms of x and y it will become only x square plus y square and this is defined as omega phi similarly from the you know friedman equation that you have already defined here that 3h square we have already defined 3h square and this is the first friedman equation yeah this one so if you just divide by 3h square kappa h square rho m which is become omega m this will be this will be the critical you know density corresponds to matter which will become omega phi and it can be written as 1 minus x square minus y square. First of all, when you are studying the conditions for exponential potential and the exponential potential have only phi, then you don't require this lambda prime equation. Okay. So here you you were having just only x and y and everything will be fine because lambda becomes constant. No problem after that. But now when we are uh, using the generalized potential, the problem arises. Now the system is in 3D okay because here we have the three dynamical va dynamical variables so the phase space will become the three dimensional phase space okay now here we can understand here that uh, lambda you know because now we have to find the critical points of this x prime y prime and lambda prime so when this x prime and y prime and lambda prime simultaneously simultaneously zero so if you assume that x is equal to zero then this part and this part will going to be zero and you will having y and lambda okay so now uh, if you are imagine here omega effective is the equation of a state so if x is 0 then it will be minus y square and we are already as uh, we are we know that in the late time universe like whenever we are here that when the universe is dominated with dike energy the it will experience a negative pressure and this negative pressure will manifest that universe is expanding so when it will come so if the omega effective is actually going towards minus one then we can say that yes this is the component of dark energy it means that omega effective always be negative always be negative and it must be you know less than minus one by third therefore it is always be you know good to prefer you know omega effective because uh, these observations are suggesting that this omega effective of the universe is close to minus one or sometimes it is actually crossing the minus one behavior which is which we call the phantom barrier but now, so here we can say that if x is 0, then omega effective is minus y square. And if y is 1, then we can say that omega effective is minus 1, which corresponds to the late time dynamics. Well, if you see that here x prime is, you know, y, y is 1, therefore x prime is not 0, unless when your lambda is 0. So lambda has to be 0, therefore here lambda is 0 and lambda prime is 0. Therefore, the equation of, you know, uh, so x must be 0 and lambda must be 0 okay fine but y should be 1 so why and y should be 1 here y is 1 x 0 x 0 and 1 is uh, uh, if we have plug in here 1 therefore y prime is also 0 so everything is you know well defined and respected but when you see here this gamma then what you are experiencing here here is that when gamma is defined like this so 1 over lambda to the power something therefore as lambda goes to 0 this gamma becomes you know divergent well, one can say that, okay, gamma can become divergent, no problem, because it is the second derivative of the potential and we don't require it. Because if gamma goes to be zero, infinity, but lambda is again zero, so zero into infinity will always be zero. So it is fine. Okay. So no problem. It, but so for an example that we have to understand the stability of these critical points, you know, one of the critical point is corresponds to the late time universe, which where x zero, y is lambda zero and y is equal to one. Okay. Everything is fine. But where... Uh, will this point will be stable or unstable who is going to tell me so this can be uh, you know find out by using the jacobian analysis when we define the jacobian in this using this matrix that's whenever you have the x prime equation divide by x so whatever the right hand equation 
you have to must differentiate with respect to x, y, and lambda. Okay. Similarly, dy prime x, y differentiate with respect to x, y, lambda, and so on with 2.9 equation. So that is the matrix that you will find. Jacobian. This is called linearization of the autonomous equation. So when you will do, then you will realize that if you find the Jacobian at d lambda prime over d lambda, then you will going to get here an interesting situation like d lambda prime over d lambda will going to give you this equation that d lambda prime over d lambda it is constant no problem then x over lambda now what happens is that in this critical point you are saying that x is equal to 0 and lambda has to be 0 therefore this form will equivalent to 0 by 0 form and 0 by 0 form does not exist it is indeterminate form it means that we can never analyze the you know when jacobian is indeterminate or jacobian does not exist then we cannot tell anything about this critical point and which is you know absurd when we try to understand the understand the dynamics of the critical point it is completely absurd that you are having you know data your your determinant is no longer be you know valid so what to do now, in order to, you know, resolve this uh, equation and you want to understand what happens to lambda going to be zero, then what you can do is that you redefine your, uh, you know, lambda in such a way that it is no longer producing, you know, such kind of behavior. You know, when your lambda is equal to zero, then your Jacobian must be finite. Okay. It should not be like, uh, you know, it is not, un it is undeterminate. So, what happens is that they have followed the nice thing. Like, uh, suppose if lambda is zero, then it is fine and uh, this one so when they have uh, they have you know uh, transformed this in such a way that if lambda is going to be zero z will be become zero if lambda is going to be infinity then it z will become uh, one so z is now between one to zero okay so uh, it has you know many applications what is the application of it now you can understand here that uh, when you are plugging in it, so when you are plugging the uh, you know lambda term and you take the lambda prime of it, and you, you just uh, you know convert each and every equation of here in terms of you know z, then what will you get is you will get the new autonomous equation. Okay. Now here z is uh, when uh, you have the you know y must be one, x is zero. Now you will see that x zero, y is one again 0 0 0 and y is 1 but if z will be 0 then again then you will have the x prime will be 0 similarly here y1 x0 y1 is 0 again x0 no problem again here that uh, x is 0 then z can be anything here okay but we have already seen that z must be you know 0 then and only can x prime will be x prime will be 0 but the problem here is that if you want to study around z is equal to 1 because z is equal to 0 is again a trivial one but suppose if you want to study around z is equal to 1 part then how will you see the dynamics because if z becomes 1 then this whole x prime y prime y prime will equation diverges therefore at this point your autonomous system will become you know completely useless because if y is 0 and z is equal to 1 then again you will get 0 by 0 form if x is 0 and z is equal to 1 again 0 by 0 form so it is kind of a useless thing so in order to remedy this what you can do is that you cannot redefine your time variable because here our time variable is dx over dn now we have to remove this divergence so how to remove the divergence so in dynamical system what you can do you can just redefine dn as 1 minus z into dn okay now redefine now this redefinition does not have any impact because the dn you know uh, the time is you know cosmic time is evolving in a one particular direction and z is uh, again a positive quantity so it is always be z between 0 to 1 again it has become positive this is positive it is coming from the h into dt it is, it is again positive so what you can see here that dx prime over dn is equal to just multiply by 1 minus z here and again there was 1 minus z so it will cancel it out so all the quantity gets cancelled out which has the divergence so whenever you will encounter any divergence in your autonomous system you can just you know define the time variable in such a way that it will you know cancel all the divergences. well is it mathematically good well it is not mathematically good but physically we can do it so physically it makes sense so that is the thing it is not very hardcore mathematics but it is legitimate you know now we have to study this 
uh, these equations. Now, corresponding to this, there are these are the there are critical points corresponds to this you know uh, equations and these equations are labeled here. That suppose x zero y zero, then we have already said that uh, z can be anything. Okay, so eigenvalue will become now whenever we study the uh, critical point, we have to find out the Jacobian and its eigenvalue. So the corresponding eigenvalue is because it is a three dimension. Therefore, you have you are going to get three eigenvalues. Three cross three matrix will always give you the three eigenvalues. Hence, here it is zero and minus. And then if z is exceeding one, which cannot, which it won't exceed. Therefore, again it will, uh, you know, it will be positive always. So if your eigenvalue, if one any one of your eigenvalue is zero, and rest of the you know real quantities are negative then we cannot see anything about it suppose you have the zero like this minus one minus one so these are real parts so in any eigenvalue if any of the eigenvalue or real part is zero or rest of the part is negative then the analysis cannot be done through the linear stability or you cannot say that by you know uh, using the technique linearity technique by using the Taylor expansion we used to tell that okay if it is negative and so on then it will be possible uh, it is it is stable so we cannot now say that this critical point is stable okay now on the other hand if you have the zero real part and one is negative and another one is positive then it will be always be unstable okay so it is guaranteed that if any of the you know real part is positive and rest is negative and there is a zero involved there so it, if it is four dimension or three dimension or two dimension no problem it will automatically be unstable or you can already see that if it is you know minus one one and two then it is saddle so saddle is again in the category of unstable so this a point will always be unstable now on the other hand b part b part if x becomes negative then you can say that b we we, we don't know that what happens to b again now, if uh, for C, then he, they have said, shown that here is for n is equal to 2 minus 3 and then there is minus 3 plus minus this one. So, based on the alpha, you have to find if uh, all the thing, all the things are, you know, negative. And then again, we cannot say anything about it. If any of the part is positive, then you can say it is unstable. Similarly here, if 4, 3, 4, 5, again, we cannot know about this point. Again, point D, again here, C and D are the both, you know, uh, they will have uh, minus one and one they are symmetric basically okay so uh, on the zero line they are be symmetric so their behavior is quite similar okay so if you know everything about one then automatically you will know about uh, you know minus one although we have started with the thing that oh, y is always be greater than or equal to zero but if you will see the autonomous equation here autonomous equation here then you can see that if if you put y to be negative to y to be negative here y will be negative minus one here it will be positive here it is negative so the whole thing will become you know a negative and dy by prime so it will again left hands are negative just multiplying by negative in every way you will always get non-inverted you know autonomous equation because the autonomous equation is you know symmetry having y corresponds to minus inf uh, uh, y goes to minus y okay while on the other hand if you will see x goes to minus x then there it will pick a negative sign Again, it is a uh, big negative sign. Here is negative sign, but uh, you know because of this negative sign, it is not uh, a, a you know the autonomous system has been inverted, so it is no no longer a symmetric autonomous equation. Okay, okay. So moving on. Now here, when we try to understand the phase space in three dimension, then here is the phase phase space, but the phase space even cannot tell you anything about it. Okay. So, in order to understand the you know critical point, the behavior of this critical point is where the linear stability theory fails, then it comes to the center manifold theorem or Lupinov stability theorem or numerical techniques. Okay. So if you don't know anything about the center manifold theorem or let us say CMT, you can adopt the numerical technique. Okay. Or you can use the Lupinov uh, theorem, which is again a very hectic process. Again, center manifold theorem is also a hectic process. I'm not going, going to, you know, greater detail that, okay, uh, is this center manifold, what, what happens to center manifold theorem? Because it will take, you know, another video to describe the center manifold theorem. So I can give you some kind of glimpse that how you can do actually the center manifold theorem analysis. So suppose you have the critical points okay suppose you have the critical points let us say b because i had already told you that b is always uh, you know if you have the 
uh, any you know positive point then it will always be unstable consider that x can be anything and y can be zero and uh, you know z will be one always be one and this is corresponds to the autonomous equation like this because we have you know uh, uh remove the divergence and we are have to study this autonomous equations okay so uh corresponds to b what is this b b is if x is x can be anything y is zero z is one so what happens in the first first step is that you have to make the coordinates uh, by using some transformation to the origin and suppose x is uh, any then you can assume that x is zero x is one let us say x is a and y is zero and z is already given one so in order to uh, make it to the origin what does it mean it means that if you define a positive uh, capital y capital x and capital z so if you put x is one and consider that uh, x is you know depending on the you know x is maybe negative or maybe positive so suppose x minus a and if you put x is a therefore it will become zero similarly y is zero therefore it will always be zero and if z is one then one minus one is already zero so that is the this transformation will give you that you you are transferring the whole critical points into the origin okay now so now you have to rewrite the autonomous equation 2.19 to 2.212 in this form x prime y prime z prime okay now you can evaluate the matrix and you can see that you will have the non-trivial matrix where there is only one part and it is a diagonal matrix so you can easily find the eigenvalue corresponds to it so if the jacobian itself is going to be zero then the center manifold theory cannot be applied because the matrix should should not be null matrix hence you know center manifold theorem you know fails if a is uh, anything other than zero then you can apply the center manifold theorem now consider that a is one what does it tell you it tells you that x is equal to positive it means that we already know that this uh, the you know uh, the point becomes unstable however we want to understand that how it is applying how we can you know manifest from the cmt therefore what you can do is that you can again read uh, define the new variables like capital x y z in terms of u w and p now another thing is that when you have defined this in such a way that where you have to look for these equations before defining you know uh, u v w you have to first look for these equations and you have to you have to add up the following thing that in this x prime y prime or z prime there must be some linear of this thing which should be there let us say it is a b and c and then it will uh, now the the other part will consist of x square y square x y and so on so, so forth we don't care about okay so in these equations there must be some coefficient which is you know linear of x linear of y linear of z if you find this thing you can easily find out the coefficient of this thing so now if you will see here you have to expand these things now uh, you can easily see that for x prime part here this is always multiplying with z therefore you won't find here any you know linear x again here there is no linear x so therefore the a part x prime is equal to a into x a part will always be zero similarly here y prime part here y and z is multiplying so there is no any you know a single y so here but if you are multiplying here then we can say that this y will be always y will always left single and you will have root 3 by 2 something y therefore this will corresponds to b part okay the b of y and similarly if i'm seeing the z prime here x and z so z will always uh, multiply with this thing and there will be z x so i am ha having a, also like z of a so c part will having you know non-zero part therefore that is the thing they have already shown you that so suppose you have I can hang on a second so if n is greater than okay yeah now since n is greater than 3 you have to also look for it if n will gre greater than be 3 then it will become z to the power z is greater than 1 or 2 so it always be z square z cube z 4 and so on so it will also not contribute any linear in z so you can say that okay i'm attaching the variable x prime is u y uh, occur x is u y is v and uh, or y is w or z is let us say v then you will have these equations like u prime is 0 v prime is 0 and w prime is equal to plus minus root 3 by 2 and some you know f which is actually consisting u v w and so on just i have told you so you can now expand it in the matrix form that u prime v prime and w prime and you will see having this thing 
now you have to you know uh defined h in such a way that this h will consist of you know omega square and omega cube and from here you have to just uh, you know uh, you have to use this thing you have to use that this is the first derivative of dsw and this is the co uh, this is not a coefficient this is the multiplication of aw and f so here uh, a is root 3 by 2 and f is some other you know uh, some other functions like here f whatever the f it was so this one is this one was f so you do all these things and hw is already defined as a2 omega a square plus a3 w cube and then you have to follow the b and g and then equal to zero and you have to you know compare it to this h1 and h2 and from here you will get the coefficients a2 a3 and all these things and you will get here like w dot is equal to plus minus root 3 by 2 w minus half root 3 now according to cmt theory if lowest order is odd parity term with positive coefficient the system is unstable so suppose odd parity means that if you have the power of one 3 5 means that omega goes to minus omega will always give you the inverted you know equations so if you have this you know odd parity and here if you take the positive sign okay the coefficient is positive then this system is always unstable but if omega is you know uh, omega is w is w and it is having negative sign therefore the point will become stable that is the thing that is the you know then the system is stable so in some sense the point b is stable for x is negative it means that it is showing you some you know different bizarre behavior that there is some you know stable point exist for this stable point you know omega effective will become one so this is actually giving you early time universe that there were some point some critical point which is actually giving you the you know unaccelerated epoch where there exists some you know critical point which is very stable so this is the way you have to apply the cmt and you have to analyze for different different uh, you know uh, points and we already know that the c is c or d they must have to be stable in order to give you the late time acceleration now if you understand numerically then numerically what you can do numerically you can you know expand these equations for an example here it is so here is your autonomous equation you have to take you know some initial conditions x0 y0 or z0 and you have to see the evolution for different different initial conditions and you have to take some alpha because alpha is a constant and for n is equal to 3 4 5 or 2 you can have the plots okay so if the equation is if the you know uh, x or if the critical point is really stable then it will converge to some point and you can, here you can see that for you know some initial condition y is actually going to be zero when x is negative so for you know x is uh, negative here it is the part x is going to be negative and y is going to be zero and z if z diverges or z, z takes any kind of value then one can say that the point b is stable okay now similarly here they have given you the n is equal to two part n is equal to two part and three part for you know x is zero now now x is going to be zero y is converting towards one and z is again itself going to be zero it means that this projection of x y z for critical point c so they have analyzed the critical point for c part so you have to just uh, define some initial conditions near to those points and you have to see the track down the evolution similarly for this d part now x is going to be zero y is uh, actually going, going towards uh, minus one and in this case z is going to be zero then it will say that d is again unstable so in this way we have to use in this way it is the way to tackle down the you know uh, any kind of uh, power law potential suppose you have the five to the power four or five to the power six so you have to define lambda you have to invert phi in terms of lambda and then you have to redefine you have to redefine your uh, dynamic system if there is any divergence okay so in this way we have to uh, we have saying that the quintessence is no longer you know uh, limited to e to the power only five part you can always have e to the power five square e to the power five cube and so on similarly uh, you, do, you, do, you do not just uh, you know limit yourself up to five square or five cube if you have power law okay using these techniques you can study as long as whatever kind of potential you have so either it is k-sense or quintessence or any taken kind of field now following this method you can study any dynamical systems so i hope this uh, review is you know worth the time and here they have already shown you that what happens to omega phi and omega m omega phi was you know before it was one because there was some kind of an stable point there 
and it is showing you the early time when omega phi you know uh, this is omega phi omega phi was you know dominated in early time and then it is you know uh, getting uh, less dominated and omega m is going to be dominated and again in late time late time the scalar field dominates similarly here you can see the different behavior corresponds to different points okay uh, you, one can also plot omega phi omega phi equation of the state and you will see the behavior at omega phi will be following like uh, first it will be going to 1 and then 0 and then it will be negative of 1 okay and this negative 1 will correspond to the uh, late time uh, late time behavior so i hope uh, uh, you can you know you can download or read this this is the ar uh, this is the archive i will give you the link of you know archive and this is the archive id so for today it's all see you next see you next time